You're listening to Mainstream Metaphysics with Nick Newmont, only on L.A. Talk Radio. It's Tuesday night. It's 8 o'clock in Los Angeles, and this is a lot of background noise. This is Mainstream Metaphysics. Hi, I'm Nick Newmont, along with Audrey Newmont, and welcoming back Jillian Kane, our friend and uh, resident of the Newmont Center. Welcome to back hear. to the show. It's been a while. I know. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be out again in, in the world, you know. It feels good. It does feel good. It feels great. And hello, Audrey. Hello. What do you have to say? I'm saying I'm getting you up, up started up on the <laughs> uh, watch party. <laughs> getting every, everything handled. Um, yeah, because it is Mercury retrograde. And for goodness sake, Jillian, in, in the shadow period of Mercury retrograde, you moved. Oh, yeah. It was intense. It was really intense. And, you know, it was going in. It's in Cancer, right? Mercury retrograde yes. in campus. It's all about my, for me, my home, my family, my whole, like, emotional being. It was a very big purge. Really profound. <laughs> really profound. And so, I mean, now, I, I, you know, when I realized that Mercury retrograde, for me, I can, no matter where it is, I can kind of smoothly sail through it as long as I just use my intuition. Sure, sure. Yeah, you, know? you have to you have to trust yourself. And as I've been saying for years, we do face right now we have five planets retrograde, but you can't buy into astrological paranoia. No. You still have to live a life. Right. Um, Audrey and I have had clients um, in the last couple of days uh, messing with their schedules, and you know, and all three of us because of what we do, we rely on appointments and mm -hmm. the commitment to keeping that appointment. But I, I've got to tell you that. Um, now that we're fully entrenched into Mercury retrograde. So my Monday schedule yesterday, so it starts off with um, first client is in England, which is a Zoom appointment, 9.30 in the morning. I, I wake up early yesterday morning. I see confirmed from her she's got the Zoom invite, um, and then, then it started. So Sunday night, less than 24 hours, one of my good client. You know, you, you don't slap good clients on the wrist. Says, oh, something came up. I've got to go to this. Can we move to later in the week? Fine. No big deal. And then um, a client that Audrey referred to me was supposed to be my 1 o'clock client. And she said that whatever had come up, and she can't come in. <laughs> okay. So then I get to work, and, I, and I'm seeing I've got a hole here, and I've got a hole there in the schedule. So while I'm waiting for my 9.30 client to, to come on, on Zoom, I'm sitting there, and you knew that I was waiting. And in the meantime, I'm talking to someone on the phone. And I wrote an email, you know, I'm here waiting for you. I sat there um, making phone calls, and that client never came on. Oh. All right? The one that confirmed. That's the point about Mercury retrograde. I get an email later on that even though she confirmed it, something happened with taking her daughter to school, and this is in England, so they're like seven hours ahead of us, that she forgot and was so embarrassed. <laughs> but here's, here's what happens too. So in the meantime, a client that wanted to have an appointment, I called at the last minute and said, D do you want to have a reading today? She goes, oh yeah, I can do it at, you know, you know around lunchtime. And then another woman called that morning and I see who it is, and it's a, another longtime client. She wants to have a half an hour reading. And I said, well, I can do it today. Well, that certainly worked. Mm -hmm. So in the, in the hilarity of Mercury retrograde, um, you know, a couple of them dropped off. And then, and then because you did something with a client that we are sharing, she was going to cancel her appointment at the last minute. <laughs> and I said, no, my 11 o'clock can't. And, it, and she goes, okay, I can come earlier before I see Audrey. It's like musical this, chairs. It is right. like musical right. chairs. Exactly. But that's the beauty of Mercury retrograde. Sometimes if you let it flow, you know, and you don't get yourself all freaked out because that's where you cause the, you know. Right. Yeah, I, I exactly. think there needs to be more about the communication aspect you know, Mercury well, retrograde, you say something and it's taken the wrong way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That That's happens yes. nonstop. Y yes, in Mercury retrograde, you have to avoid, well, the technical gaffes where email or text or voice 
phone doesn't work right. or the he said, she said mm -hmm. kind of stuff comes up in Mercury retrograde. And of course in Mercury retrograde, and you just kind of alluded to it, is that because if you're writing and you can't hear voice inflection, uh, it, uh, it, can, it can go to hell Misinterpretation of tone is really <laughs> a big deal with Mercury retrograde. And then, and then people don't say, well, what, what, I'm not sure what did you mean by that. Then it'll come out of their mouth as, well, what did you mean by that? Right, and then you take it wrong. <laughs> right. It's like, wait, what? What happened? And here it goes. Then, then the tornado just gets yeah. gone, yeah. and it's all out of control. Yeah. There's all these times where I've said, that's not been my intention. Mm -hmm. yes. When it comes across, however it comes across, it's like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> Just say it. Oh, yeah. Yep. And, and you have to be careful in Mercury retrograde because if you say something, then people that they don't like, they can hold on to it right. for a long time. Right. But, but I will say that one of the upsides about Mercury retrograde is that it may also means communication from the past. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you hear from people that you haven't heard from in God knows how long. All the time that happens. Or I feel compelled to reach out to people that I haven't heard from, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, and they keep popping in my mind and I'm thinking I need to, I, I even need to call some people now that have been coming right. back. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's a, it, it can get out of hand. And the funny thing is, and I'll touch on this very quickly. So in the chart of the United States of America, in the natal chart, Mercury is retrograde. In other words, the United States is born with Mercury in retrograde. Is that why we have so many communication problems in this country? Probably. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that means in the eighth house, and the eighth house is other people's money, investments, meaning stocks, bonds, real estate. That's also the house of sex. Power. Power, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's Plutonian. Yeah. Death and rebirth, yep. all right? And, uh, <laughs> and that's there it pretty is. heavy, actually. You yeah, know, I didn't realize really that. It's that's the eighth it. house. Is the Scorpio? Yeah, house. the Scorpio. It's mm. the most intense house of the twelve. But but here's the good but. There's always a but. My favorite <laughs> word. Um, so now that Mercury is retrograde in the eighth house, what I'm looking for, and not in a like Pollyanna way. I mean, saying it predictively for something to happen along the way while Mercury is retrograde in the eighth house where the money problems that are in the country are gonna shift. Flip. There, <clears throat> there's, there's gonna be, like in the Avengers Thanos when mm -hmm. he snapped, okay, but that was a bad snap. I'm looking for a good snap mm -hmm. while Mercury is retrograde in the country. You're agreeing. Yeah, I feel like there is gonna be some sort of transformation for sure. Right. I mean, we're, you know, I mean, not to get too, but yeah. we're in we're a critical mass. There's a lot of energy flying around now. <laughs> yeah, there is. Audrey, you were going to say yeah. Well, so to be clear, what you're saying is that while Mercury is in retrograde, so we've been having this huge moment with, you know, COVID and all of these things. Yeah. So you're saying that as we're going into Mercury retrograde, that financially we're going to really turn things around. Yes, that is what I'm saying. Just to be clear. Yes. Yeah. I like See, it. Look how good yeah. that was. I like yeah, it. Yeah, that was good. See, you were able to explain it clearly. <laughs> so no I'm confusing. very clear about these things. Because, you know, I think people are looking for some hope with that oh, right now. Are. For God's <clears throat> sakes. I mean, it's just been such a hard time. I know. So well, much despair. And that and that is that is something that I, I, I do want to talk about is readings and hope. And, and, and Jillian, you know, I know you're you explain yourself in this. You know, when, when we do readings, we all are studied in so many different things. And you can do someone's astrology chart. You can have a numerology reading. Um, you can use cards, okay? And you can use your intuition, your clairvoyance, your clairaudience. You can read palms. Uh, there's so many different ways you can scry in crystals. Our health practitioner reads the iris. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, and Dr. She, Bennett, yes. Yeah, and I think that's an, a pretty amazing reading. And Merlin is a, a form of reading. Right, you can channel. channel. Yep, you can be a medium, you can channel. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so, so where people are looking for hope, and that was the perfect word. You know, uh, you know we, there are certain things that we say before we go on the air and we go, save it for the show, save it for the show. <laughs> but, but 
I think that we are on the same page where I, I know that people want to know about how things are going to turn out in the mundane areas of their life. But I think when we are talking about consciousness, that it's really important that we feed their soul too. Like, how's your soul? How's your soul going to be? Mm -hmm. How are you on that other level? Totally. You know, you want to jump in here? Well, I mean, as sort of a backstory, we're all really, we're in an auspicious time right now, really, really auspicious. And so we're coming into more of a fifth dimensional reality. And it's so important to stay positive amidst all of this craziness. Um, <sighs> it's just almost overwhelming with what's going on. But literally, you have to um, train your brain to stay positive during this time. And what I'm telling all my clients is that that's the main thing. It's you will be able to, as we become less in the physical realm and the more in the non-physical, be able to manifest whatever you want in a moment. It's mm -hmm. about where you put that energy, you know. Right. While you two were saying that, and I have both of you here, I feel like I'm in that special spot again this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had a few clients that, especially my younger clients, they're, they're in their teens, so they don't have that life experience. And a few of them, and I, I'm talking at least, I want to say like three of them, they have had this moment where in this time, you talk about going from the third through the fourth into the fifth, they don't know what to do with themselves. And they're they're kind of like, really like, almost like way too open. O overwhelmed. And really. overwhelmed. Yeah. And it's been a lot for them to get more grounded yes. and centered. Tell, mm. tell everybody a little bit more about what exactly it means as we're going from the third to the fourth, through the fourth well, into the fifth. It's interesting because, and I didn't expect to talk about this right quick, like right. we are, but, I just uh, right 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 there. but um, <laughs> I've been experiencing um, and they're calling it ascension, right? Mm -hmm. You are becoming less physical in your body, so you can feel lightheaded and less in this physical world, and almost a dissociation sometimes. Exactly, of, that's what I'm talking about. Right, where you're like, you kind of lose track of the mm -hmm. physicality that you're in, and so it's really important to ground, but it's also important not to allow it to freak you out and cause you to have fear and anxiety, you right. know, because it is something that is happening. And we are expanding our consciousness, like on a whole cell level, all of humanity is going to become fully conscious in very short amount of time compared to what it would normally take, you mm -hmm. know, a hundred, who knows how long. We're on a fast track for that expansion of consciousness. And so the physical, is going to start changing how we feel you know and i had a lucid dream yeah, that, tell me about oh that you were starting God, to tell so me wild. earlier okay <laughs> first of all lucid dreaming is um a way that you dream where you are in control of the dream right you know you know you can t control it and so when you're dreaming you're not in your physical your physical body's asleep so wherever your mind is is where you are you know i guess your soul whatever so I had this lucid dream, and the Pleiadians were there. The Pleiadians are interdimensional beings that are helping this planet during this very auspicious time, among others. And they said to me, we want to show you what it's like to be fully in 5D. Wow. And we went on this journey all night long, and it was wild. And they told me th the main points that I came away with, because I said, you know, it took the whole night. And they showed me all these things, and I kept thinking, I need to sleep. And they said, you won't need to sleep as much in 5D or eat as much. And um, you can think about something and have it manifest because it's less... It, manifestation takes so much energy in the to be in the physical world. Like, you can manifest instantly in the non-physical world. All you have to do is think. Mm -hmm. But in the physical world, it actually has to take form. And mm -hmm. it takes a huge right. amount of repetition and, like, all sorts of... And being the same vibration and traction, a million things. So 12 spiritual laws in perfect harmony, whatever, you know. But they're saying that you'll be able to do it instantly and that you'll be able to have people perceive you how you want to be perceived just by thinking about it. 
I think that people hear something like that and they're like, what do they mean? It's like it's not something that we've ever accomplished. It's not something that most people well, haven't done. What are you going to say? Me, let me jump in on this. Yeah. So in terms of that and engineering that, for people that have had energy work with me, the, the sentient healing process, in the invocations that I go through and the numbers and the ascensions, you know, it goes into the fifth dimension so you can work on people on a soul level. And that's why anyone that's watching that's had me work on them and both of you no, yeah. here to attest that, why you get off the table when you're done going, whoa. Oh. And one, you have no concept of time. Mm -mm. You, you think it's 15, 20 minutes when it's been 90. Mm -hmm. um, so in the fifth dimension, the fourth dimension is time. So when we go into the fifth dimension, there is no time. Everything, that's why you can manifest instantly because right. it's not thwarted by time. Exactly. So, that, so when we're talking about fifth dimension, we are talking about working in a parallel with the soul level where there is no density. You know, right. there are no obstacles. And so that's why that work works well yeah. because we're not working through physical tissue. We're working in an expanded consciousness, exactly. but that's also why when you get off the table, at first you're kind of loopy. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like what just happened? Because we know how to engineer into the fifth dimension and they are sacred codes and things like that, that I was taught years ago and I've passed on to my students as to how to create this, this feeling. And it does allow for healings. And that's why, although I will never say the words that I heal people, because I don't, but we do have things happen where there are improvements in the physicality. And, um, and Audrey knows this, that there are nine, you know, going back over 20 some years, nine different women that I've worked on in that means that said they couldn't get pregnant or doctors said they couldn't get pregnant and they were able to get pregnant after that work. Well, so, I think your work activates the healing process. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, energetically, it's like flip the switch and, you know, your body can heal. Right. But you energetically activate those processes, I think. And so it is part of the healing process. Maybe it's not you just healing, but it is, you know, a partnership. Right. In the, in the healing process. And it's profound. Believe me, I'm telling you. I'll, I, I actually would love to come back in right away. <laughs> come back in. <laughs> well, the, and the other thing is that, you know, the, your aura and your chakras, all right, those energy centers are part of the soul, okay, with specifics toward us as who we are in, in this physical body and how we identify. So we are surrounded with that um, fourth dimension, which is the aura and the chakras all the time. They're there, whether people believe it, acknowledge it, they're there. The energy centers are real. Oh yeah, so, totally. You know. So one of my favorite people is Joe Dispenza and he does a meditation where he literally has you go through that in a meditation and get to that manifestation part. And he has all kinds of people that are healing themselves, you know, mm -hmm. through meditation. Right. It's phenomenal. It's really very interesting. Mm -hmm. So can you tell everybody, like in a bit of a nutshell, what exactly does it mean that you're going from the third through the fourth and into the fifth dimension? What exactly does that mean? Okay, so this, this is the third dimension mm -hmm. where we have physical limitation. Mm -hmm. you know, limitation like, being the key word. It is right. literally the prison of the light body. You know, right. being in this physicality is a very prison-like, I believe, because, sorry. To, like, no, 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 it's fine. it's fine. <laughs> and so when you, when you start to accelerate the energy field, you first go into fourth dimension where you start to lose that sense of time. And then the fifth dimension is a soul level consciousness, not this conscious mind, it's soul level consciousness. But when you're existing in it, that's why it's kind of weird because you have some of your own mindset, but then you have all this other consciousness that's coming in where you get ideas, intuitions, inspirations. And, and you can, like when you're having a lucid dream, you can slip into the fifth dimension 
you know. Oh yeah. In fact, in fact, remember remember the movie Inception mm -hmm. with Leonardo DiCaprio mm -hmm, and how mm -hmm. they were layered dreaming down, mm -hmm. down, down. Mm -hmm. Well, at the time that was going on, I started having, which is you know the power of suggestion, obviously. Sure. I started having the same dream, and what what Jillian was saying earlier that in lucid dreaming you're aware that you're dreaming and you realize you're in a dream and a dream and a dream but the point is of lucid dreaming is you have control you're not subject to like you're watching a movie you have control and finally in the third night of this same dream I realized what was going on and I said I want to find a mirror uh -huh. and so I did <laughs> and I looked in the mirror when I looked in it was a sandy colored hair guy with a mustache. It didn't look like this. Wow. wow. So I discovered a parallel in, no. the fifth in the fifth dimension, a parallel me. Wow. That's Which is, that's another topic. Yeah, right. Parallel existences. Very deep. And that's, and that's why when you, when you slip into a parallel, that's why you have deja vus and things mm -hmm. like that. Because maybe you didn't actually go to that spot as yourself but your parallel did mm -hmm. and you and it you have a consciousness bleed through where it's like wait a minute I've done this before but no I couldn't, couldn't right. have done this before that whole thing about dreaming and having lucid dreams actually he he first met me in a very lucid dream but I think that we forget that we can use that period in the night to oh, our advantage yeah. like I have that deep sleep meditation on my website and it's literally to use for when you go to sleep so that you are processing in a constructive way while you're sleeping. Oh, yeah. And there's this guy, Jim Self, that I've seen a few times, and he literally talks about how he, his body will go to sleep, and he is, like, communing with all these people. Mm -hmm. Like, he never, like, literally sleeps. It's fascinating. Well, like they told me, when you're not in your physical body, you don't really need it. Mm -hmm. It's the physical body that needs to sleep. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. Right, exactly. So. so now, so we've established this, all right? So when it comes to doing readings for people, and let's forget about the cards and astrology charts and palms and books. Let's just go with being psychic, all right? So to, to go into that realm, to be psychic, where all of a sudden you go into a space and we're reading for you and we start getting all this information, um, that is going into beyond third dimension also yeah. in doing that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when a person is truly psychic, and, and you know, numerology and astrology gives timing and certain events and cards are a medium you know, to work from, you know, imagery. But when you're really psychic you know, and, and you just tap in you know, to the consciousness of that person, you know, that's when readings are just phenomenal. And one phenomenal. thing, one thing I do want to say uh, on behalf of Jillian, there was something that, there is something that was going on, is going on. Um, and I won't say the events, but Jillian picked up on it. And this goes back to when we had our fair, mm -hmm. like last summer. And it was, it's really, uh, really powerful. And that's done psychically it's not done with cards it's not done and and the level of what you saw and accuracy just using your gifts was pretty profound <laughs> well you know what i i tell people that everybody has psychic abilities everybody and the more you work them and practice the more they will and especially now the more they will become activated and you know eventually everybody will have my abilities and i'm very grateful that I have this gift, but um, it's incredible how the more readings I do, and I'm doing a lot, it, the more it just opens up. Right. It's wild. I mean, and I do tell people, and I tell everybody that I do a reading for, you have free will. You have to, I would like to give you the tools to manifest the future you want for your highest good, as opposed to being like, what's going to happen to me? You know what I mean? And so it's about helping people have clarity mm -hmm. because if you have free will and I'm looking at your future and I tell people, look, if you do this, this is what I see. But if you say, I don't want to do that, I want to do this, it changes your future and then it's, I see something different. 
and they right. show me different outcomes depending on your choice. So it's always back to you. What do you want? How right. do you get there? You know, and that's really what I try to help people is get clarity about what is for their highest good and then how do we get there? Exactly. You know? There's that part of psychic reading, and I've told many clients because you'll, like you've said something before to someone and you, someone we know, and you said this would happen like in a year. And it didn't happen in the year, but it did happen down the line. Mm -hmm. So there's that part of time that is, That's explain right. that. Well, it's, you know, using abilities, you know, predicting who, what, where, you know, the event, mm -hmm. that the hardest thing to predict and by the way, and this is where astrology comes into play in numerology mm -hmm. because they are clocks. Yeah. But when you see events and all that, when is the hardest thing to predict? But remember that word when, <laughs> my, everybody's out there, they said the word when. <laughs> you know, Merlin has been all over the word when recently and to stop asking when. And, and, you know, and Merlin has said, and Jillian said to me earlier today on the phone, that when you ask when, you are causing, you're, you're affirming it's not happening, exactly. and therefore you push the event down Away. the road. Exactly. Okay? Yep. That's what happens when you ask when too <clears throat> it's, much. It's speaking lack, because you're saying, well, I don't have it, you know, as opposed to being in the, in the vibration and in the right. gratitude that it's already happened, and you have it, and so you're rejoicing, and then it'll happen immediately, or very... Right much faster. <laughs> truly, 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 truly. And also, when we are talking about something as when, affirming that we don't have it, we're not, at the, at the same time, we're not acknowledging what we do have. Exactly. It's, in other words, it's, it's almost like a person is saying, well, if I don't get that, if I don't have that, well, well look at what you do have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. So when it comes to what we do, and Audrey, you're, you're intuitive yourself, I know how you've worked with clients, but when it comes to doing readings for people, when is it good and when can it be bad? Like who's a, who's a good subject and who's not such a good subject? Well, I would say that a person who's not a good subject is those clients that they're relying on us to kind of guide them. So they'll come in and they turn into psychic junkies, right? Yes. Yep. And they just come every week. It's like, just tell me what to do. What's going to happen? How do I do it? And they're not using their own power to, you know, create their own present and future. Right. It's funny. I had a client that was waiting for a specific event, financial event. And um, I saw it coming, but it was the mo every he was he became such a junkie on the win this is my point mm -hmm. going back to the win right. he was not a good client i finally had to cut him loose look because i kept saying the more you win it you know the more you are grasping for it and wanting that that energy is pushing that back further and further and so i'm not going to tell you anymore <laughs> i was <laughs> like no it's not you know when you change your energy and in our ingratitude today then we can talk some more right because it just became um, because then when the wind didn't come, he would be like, and it didn't come, you know, <laughs> like it's your fault now it didn't come or something, you know, I was like, dude, <laughs> it's like, well, that, that's a, that's another thing is sometimes <laughs> clients like dare you to read them, like to be wrong or to be right. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, well, then why are you here? You know, because we're here to help. Well, that's what, the main thing. Yeah. What, and, and how many, Jillian, how many times would you say, when you're doing a reading and you're really recognizing what's going on with your client that you you slip into being a therapist oh i'm always somewhat a therapist because i give them tools like and the tools that i give them are very spiritual tools or whatever and and i'm like this is basically how you get better <laughs> you know this is right. how you get where you want to get you know but you have to do these like you for example, this is a predominant thing, two really predominant themes. We have to stay in a high vibrational state. We have to stay positive. It's critical right now. Mm -hmm. How do you do that when everywhere you look is negativity, a sea yeah. of darkness? Like right now, what we're dealing, you turn on the news and it's like, oh my God, the world, you know, whatever. Yeah. So discernment, you don't allow that stuff in. You have to really focus your brain on what's positive in your life. 
and it takes an immense effort right now because of what's going on around us. I stopped watching news. I, I did too. I'll, Forget I'll watch things on YouTube that are informational, <coughs> but I don't watch the news. I don't even look at anything anymore. I just listen to sound frequency. Yeah. Like all the sound frequencies, and I do these deep meditations and sleep to sound frequency. Mm -hmm. And really, you know what it's about? <laughs> really, it's about tr activating your DNA and transforming your DNA from carbon based to silica based. Oh, frequency you just lost a whole lot of people right I know, there. but it's going into a <laughs> crystalline different vibe. So keeping a positive, you can't be in the high vibrational space when you're down, when you're negative. Exactly. It's impossible. You can't do anything. Well, one key word that you said is, and, and people ask, you know, so many different questions. And a lot of times the answer, the remedy is meditation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that is where you're going to find peace of mind and, and solace and solitude and information and answers and, by, and answers and by the way beginning um, I think it's July the 8th I sent something out today we begin at the Newmont Center on Wednesday nights an eight-week course on meditation that leads to channeling so if That's you want more nice. information you know get in touch with me because that is phenomenal and you'll take if you are a meditator you will take your meditation much higher in that course and if you've never meditated you will learn to meditate uh, to a very accomplished level so meditation is so key yeah. in today's world <laughs> because that's that's where your peace of mind is going to be and and as people have heard me say before that sometimes people say oh, I can't meditate and all that if you sit and worry or if you sit and daydream you're meditating okay those are forms of meditation so if you can sit and worry, you can meditate. I wanted to get back to something. Yep. We were talking about when you go to a psychic and there's those people that are psychic junkies. Yes, yes. But you also have a fair amount of clients that come to you on a weekly basis, and you've literally guided them through some pretty challenging times. Yes. And, and those, those individuals are not psychic junkies. No. Because their, their sessions are a combination of therapeutic and informational mm -hmm. and this is what you need to do mm -hmm. as Jillian says and you your book tools for transformation mm -hmm. yes right. tools, tools are important and and there are some people that have a lot of critical decisions to make and they ultimately make the choice some of them have channeled sessions with Merlin where Merlin is telling them what to do and they come back with just I mean what they say that Merlin tells them I think you know. it's important because when we're in those challenges, and let's just say there's a lot of challenging no. things going on so right many. now, we have a tendency to get kind of stuck on the loop is what I call exactly. it. Exactly. Or we go into fear where we're not thinking clearly. Exactly. So when you're able to go to somebody like you or you and or me, then we're able to help guide them because we don't have anything on it. Right. You know? right. Exactly. And, and years ago, and, and, and Jillian really knows what I'm talking about this. When I first got started, I started, you know, in the early nineties at a metaphysical bookstore. And there were a lot of the repeat clients that would come in and I built my practice through that. But some of those people were the typical metaphysical bookstore client. And it was always about a hangnail or something. <laughs> and, and I look, I, I, I don't make light of, but you know what I mean, because yeah. you had a great store and you had people yeah. that came in for readings yeah. and and it's like well these aren't really problems okay and and a lot of those people went with me into my private practice and I literally fired most of them mm -hmm. because I got to the point where I said you don't need a reading you need therapy and they didn't want to do that no mm -hmm. they didn't want to go to therapy no and I think a lot of times they just like to talk to somebody too you know and tell oh, them all their that. stuff you know yep I have clients like that, and I just let them talk. <laughs> that's fine. Maybe that's um, what they need, though, you know, to yes. just load off some stuff. And I do always interject when they're totally off track and, like, you know, right. going down, uh, you know, a path that's not going to keep them positive. It's all about staying positive these days. Right. The reason I just laughed so hard a moment ago is because I had clients that would come, then they'd come back months later for the next reading they say you know what i listened to the recording and today i'm just going to sit here and be quiet let you talk <laughs> i talked most of the reading last time <laughs> and and there are times that compassionately sometimes people need to get things off mm -hmm. their chest so it's kind of like yeah 
all right, go ahead. If you need to talk, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Talk. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Right. I have a lady I don't even send her the um, recordings anymore because it's almost all her talking. But it's okay. She feels good at the end. She feels like she was able to confide in somebody with no judgment, you know, no judgment. Right. And, you know, and then I do throw in the tools now and again. Back when I used to be a hairstylist, all I had to do is go, <clears throat> why, when, where, what, how, and let them talk. And they would leave and they'd be like, wow, I feel so much better. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. You just <laughs> dumped just all your stuff. Yeah. Exactly. You know? In case you tuned in late where uh, this is Mainstream Metaphysics and our guest is Jillian Kane, a uh, member of the Newmont Center. Um, so, you know, the whole concept of, of being a psychic and a, a credible advisor actually is a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. because there are yeah. people really hang on what you say. Well, right. And, you know, hopefully you can help people and are conscious about what you're telling them. But I had an experience just the other day where a woman, you know, she came in and then we were at the end of the time and she was like, one more question. I just want to ask about my daughter. And I was like, okay. And I was, and I saw uh, not a, not a good situation, really significant. Mm -hmm. Like she was suicidal, the girl. And wow. I, I know it was really intense. And I, she was like, well, yeah, she is. And, and she, will she make it through? And, you know, we all have free will. And I just said, look, she needs help you have to help her because if you don't then the probability is that she knows she won't make it yeah and so um when you I, I hope that that i can be of service to people for what's their highest good what what ends up being their highest good you know but um it's not always easy to to be a psychic and not sometimes put your own judgment and stuff in it takes conscious effort all the time and people sometimes need to be spoon-fed in terms of how to really manage but i think that's the job to be of service and to help them evolve spiritually and expand their consciousness and you know become their best selves mm -hmm. right and the other thing about making predictions even when they're great um you know in in the subconscious is the pain pleasure area which is fear of the unknown until they become familiar with it. And you could, the human body can only handle so much change at once. I mean, you know what it's like, you just moved. <clears throat> it's a lot and you know. Yeah, it was intense. But when we tell someone even great things, like you know, you're gonna move to New York and get this incredible job, you're gonna meet the, the man or woman of your dreams, all that, it sounds good. It sounds great on paper, but when that begins to engineer, and the person feels like, well, how, how do I leave this job? And what about my friends? And what about all that starts to click in, even though, and say you're 100% right, there is this great job on the other side of the country and there is this love of your life over there too. Until you get to that and you go through the process of doing that, that shakes the body to the core, Yeah. okay? And, and it feels good. I, I, I know for you, too. It feels good to give people good news. Oh, yeah. You know, recently something happened that wasn't good, and the client said that I was right. And I literally said, I'm sorry, but I, I don't like to be right about that kind of stuff. Oh, believe me. I saw a lot of this COVID business in advance and a lot of these protests in advance. And I, people, are, people don't want to hear bad things. And when the collective is on a track too, it's really hard to, you know, change. Oh yeah, it's like a it's, it's a like a river going downhill, right? Or you know, a ri how you, river. How do you stop that? Yeah, right. And so, I, I mean, I was like, well, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> so back on April fourth, we were talking about five D. Okay, Jupiter aligned with Pluto. Big we were deal. we were talking about it. Yep. Now June the thirtieth. In retrograde, Jupiter and Pluto are going to realign. How do you see that? Oh, well, we've done all these. <laughs> all these are like energetic portals, you know, right. for humanity to ascend, to, to become more, I don't know, light beings, I guess. And the eclipse we just went through, too, was a whole nother, like, step up. You know, it's like, I feel like we're all being activated 
like the light workers and the star seeds and all these people at the front lines are being totally activated by these transits and um energetically i don't know exactly how except for when i look at it psychically i see the brains and things going like things becoming activated and this is another biggie i mean this year is like <laughs> well there's so many different major planetary alignments That's in 2020 crazy. oh my god compared to other yeah two, yeah there's a lot this that, is a big one and here. the jupiter pluto alignment comes again in november 12th and jupiter pluto has a lot to do with transformation of power and power struggles well there'll be some big happening on that day and oh, that's definitely. what i see this big ha some big light happening i think something that everybody will have to say oh boy here we go you know this is it well that that alignment in transit in the chart of the united states happens in the second house which is the house of finance and where the, the company earns its money there's there's stuff that's going to happen this month around money in the country that's going to be probably unforeseen you know or in, like history has never seen it before all of this has historically been not been seen before right this, this is, is like all a whole territory. big deal i mean i don't want to get too far out there but it is really about the it is the game changer for yep. humanity this is the this is you know this is the ascension this is when we become our light being selves this is it and people get freaked out. Oh, God, what does that mean? We're all going to die? No. No, not does at all. not. <laughs> it means we're going to become more our light selves and more our conscious selves and more our, you know, our compassionate, objective, non-judgmental, gratitude selves. Well, we're going we're gonna to have a hiccup because Saturn since, you know, late or into April, you know, is Saturn went into Aquarius, which was good which is the, you know, things being more compassionate. But be, when Saturn stays retrograde until September 29th, it will retrograde back into Capricorn for a few months. So we will get a bit of a hiccup right. with that, <clears throat> where it's right. like, oh, oh okay. Yep. We don't really want to go back here, but mm -mm. You're in right. other words, it'll be like a little rough again. Well, I look at that Saturn too, coming into Aquarius is like the real first line um, light worker people being activated. Then we got to go back and get the rest of the crew. <laughs> come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, and then we all coming into the age of Aquarius together. <laughs> well, and it's a it's interesting too because we've talked about that on the show before with other guests where and an and astrological age change takes place every two thousand years. Right. And we happen to be on the planet now. We're witnessing something that mm -hmm. has been talked about in history, but we just. You, we don't know anyone that's lived through this before. You know that song, The Age of Aquarius, and yeah. Jupiter aligns with Mars and all that stuff. Didn't that all just happen? Those transits, like some of those transits they're talking about in that song. Somebody told me that, and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> that's Nick. Yeah, that's it. That, well, they just made that for the song. The moon it's, in the seventh half, whatever yeah, it was, I can't remember. Exactly. Um, but they're not talking about, you know, signs and stuff like that, you know, back then. It was, it was a great reference, but, but it was referencing that we were on the road to the Aquarian age. That, you know, that, with everything that I'm looking at, because I'm telling you, I go all over the place in the Internet. I want to see all these things, and I don't recommend that everybody goes where I've been going. But what I'm looking at is... She's it's, not going to a dark net. She's not no, going no, 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 I don't do that. But I'm telling you, I, I have no, no qualms about looking at everything. And what I'm seeing is that we are in a moment where we're really stepping into a humanitarian. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, I think right. people are going to be caring more about each other. As an example, all of this, um, you know, you're looking at the Black Lives Matter, which is such an important thing. Mm -hmm. And then people are expanding that out into, you know, these children that are missing and to other things that are you know, humanitarian, uh, let's just call them woes. And I think right. that people are looking and they're wanting to make a lot of things right. Exactly. Yeah, there, there's a sense of urgency mm -hmm. to um, correct and forgive a lot of sins. And that has a lot to do, and I, and I won't do that tangent, but that's Pluto 
retrograde mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. early October, fixing things. Mm -hmm. That has a lot to do with it. Before we, before we, time gets away from us, Jillian, if people want to contact you for a reading, how do, how do people get a hold of you? The best way is on my website, goddessjillian.com, goddess, and then Jillian with a G, and you can book online. It's really simple. Yep. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I, I can't even tell you enough, especially after we had all those people having readings from you at our expo, and they came up to me and it's like, oh my God, she said this and she said that, and she couldn't have known all these things, and it was just, and they all came away feeling elevated. They all came away feeling like so good. I'm so happy. That well, makes me so happy. It, it was it was like wow. You just like you were like a hundred percent, and you are a hundred percent. And I have so many people that just have come to you right. and just love you. Oh, One you. thing I've always it's just like when you get on a roll, I can tell when you are just like on it and you're tuned in because you just get energetic and you have this um, facial. Oh, you, that's so funny. I didn't know that. <laughs> you didn't know that? <laughs> no, were you just like, you, you get Oh, this. my, ma my po jaw yes, popping? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's, it's almost like Tourette's. Ah. It, <laughs> but it, I can yeah. tell when you're like tuned in and it's happening because, and then I'm like, oh, goody, she's turning <laughs> away over there. <laughs> so in a, in a, putting you on the spot, in a moment like this, is there anything that you can pick up on Audrey? <laughs> this is not rehearsed. Oh, <laughs> not no. Um <laughs> oh, well, it looks like there's some, you've got some big ideas. Your brain is really activated right now. You're, you know what it is. It's, it's all that stuff you're looking at on the internet. It's, it's, it's all good. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It's good. I mean, but I feel like your energy and your brain is like this. It's yeah. expanding out. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just looking at you psychically, but, um, uh, Oh, <laughs> see, there it see goes. that's what it is. That's what we're talking your about. heart is really activated too right now. Mm -hmm. Your heart chakra really has um, become more active. I know these are more ethereal type things, but that's just what I'm feeling from you. I'm the, very, very super excited about where we're all going, and I see it. And there's so many, many, many good things happening. Oh, agreed. It's I'm true. Just very excited. And that's about why it. it's so important to stay in the positive and not allow yourself to fall into that sea of negativity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it can wash you away. I mean, literally I have a friend that she just, she can't get out of this sorrow of, of the world. Yeah. You know, and like, that's why I tell people not to watch the news. If you're going to watch anything, there's all these. In fact, you can go to my uh, web page and I have a resource page. So stop watching the news, go on YouTube and watch any of those people any of them watch any of that because it's all going to be constructive information it's going to be things that are moving us all in the in a right direction because right. exactly. i'm just going to say on the news i don't think that we can all be very clear that this is exactly what's true it's 100 percent misinformation in there my opinion i i just decided not to take because none of it felt right to me i'm i feel when things are right and none of it's right it's and if you walk not. away from the news and you're feeling heavy and you're feeling like there is not a lot of hope, mm -hmm. it's not doing anybody any good. If it's no. not right. literally happening in your backyard and you are feeling bad about it, then turn the news off and find some resources that work for you. Right. Yeah. Or meditate and thank your blessings. Yeah. yeah. You know, exactly. You gratitude. But one, thing, one thing about as we go deeper into the Aquarian age, I think that we will fi find ourselves moving into a time of truth. Mm -hmm. oh, I, th yeah. I think that whatever we're not getting or whatever we're being told that we perceived is not right or accurate, I think that the, the information that we need is going to come out. They just said to me, all will be revealed, right. clearly. And I believe that Aquarius is the age of truth or the sign of truth or something. I feel that anyway. Right. Well, Merlin, Merlin said as much as um, when we start to get information, there's a lot of people that are going to have a hard time with the truth. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, totally. so I, I think we have to be open minded and not and not fear the truth. And they, in saying fear and truth, that's a conflict of terms because there's fear and untruth and there's love and truth. So there's no reason to fear truth. You know, we need, we just need to be open to 
you know, whatever it is. And when it comes to like when people having personal readings, if a psychic does give you some information that is a bit challenging, which challenges are okay because they make us stronger. That's right. Don't run from that because sometimes people have sat down and said, I don't want any bad news. <laughs> I know, right. It's like, oh, okay, all right. It's just sometimes well, you go through what is. What I know about the two of you, you're very constructive with the information. You know, I have had clients come to me and, and tell me stories of what a psychic has said to them or done to them. Yep. There's these charlatans out there oh, that yeah. we're not going to even get into that conversation. <clears throat> But between the two of you, I always have people coming back to me and saying, I'm excited about the future. I'm hopeful about the future. And I think that if you are a psychic, you take it upon yourself to guide people in a way that is, you know, exactly. beneficial. Exactly. Yeah, have That's a heart. That's the point. Well, yeah. and the point is to be help people get to the positive place because if you're in a dark place, you cannot do anything. Yeah. You can, literally can't do anything. Yep, you're stuck. You're exactly. stuck. Listen, we are we're at a point where we've got to wrap up. Okey it's dokey. gone fast. Um, yeah, it's been fun. Jillian will definitely have you back on anytime. Uh, anytime, having you yeah, here. yeah, absolutely. I um, once again, tell people how they can get a hold of you if they want Goddess to. Goddessjillian.com, and you just book online. Go to book, and it's really straightforward. You know? Wonderful. And Audrey, if people want to get a hold of you for therapy? AudreyNewmont.com. And you can also email me at a newmont at gmail.com. And all my information is on my website. And the best way to get a hold of me, even though I have a website <laughs> and email, is at the, call the center directly at 818-865-8770. Thanks so much for watching. And I want to say as we close, thank you so much for the continued viewership. Um, it's been phenomenal. We really appreciate uh, the feedback that we get. And also next week, another member of the Newmont Center will be here. Vox will be on with oh, us, cool. another psychic. So uh, presenting insights for you and hope for the future, right? And, and share with your friends, please. Yep, tell your friends. Thank you again, both Thank of you. you. Thank so you much. guys. It was great to be here. All right. See you next time. This has been Mainstream Metaphysics, and see you next week on LA Talk Radio. Good night, everyone. Good night. You're listening to Mainstream Metaphysics with Nick Newmont, only on LA Talk Radio.